Hey everybody, it's Brooke. <gasps> Look, we're back with the Ledger Journal, finally. My goodness, so much, you know, busyness happening. So I have missed our journal. I am ready to bind our journal together uh, and let's do it. Normally I do wait a while before I bind my signatures into the journal. Some people do it as soon as they get the pages folded, but I like to wait and rearrange and see if I want to run anything else through the sewing machine or do anything else that will be difficult uh, to do once it's bound. So I do wait longer, but I'm feeling like we can do it now. So let's do it. What I have are um, my little pokey tool. This can be a pokey tool. It can be an awl. It can be a nail. It can be a thumbtack. Whatever you have to poke a hole, it'll work. I have my binding needle that I like. It is a number 22 chenille, which means that it's got a pretty big eye and a pretty dull point. I like that because I won't be accidentally piercing paper where I don't want to. And I like the big eye because I can't see to thread it otherwise. And I just have my needles live in this piece of wool felt that will keep them from rusting. Again, any needle that you have will work just fine. You don't need this one. You can use embroidery floss and just use a piece of tape wrapped around the end or glue the end together into a point and use that as your needle. Any old sewing needle will work, whatever you have, again. Then the needle, or the thread rather, that I really like to use, this is pretty much exclusively what I use, and it's Line Co. Binders Thread. It is um, waxed linen thread. It's in a neutral color, really strong, pretty fine, and it's waxed. So the knot stays nice and tight and it runs through the paper really easily. You can use whatever string you want. Use embroidery floss, use yarn, use ribbon, whatever you got and whatever you like. Then I just have some clips to hold the signatures together and I have an old mouse pad that I use. Actually, this might have been made for poking holes in, but I think I've just about killed it. Yep, it's about dead, but that's okay. It still works. So that's what we're going to use today. And I also have this scrap of really long, it's 11 inch or 17 inch graph paper that I just keep scraps of to do longer um, templates for binding. So, here are two beautiful signatures that we've been working on. I have managed to put them together. Let's not do that. I'm going to double check them, make sure everything's where we want it. And here is the cover that we made together that I'm just so in love with. I'm so in love with it. It's faded. It's beat up. I sealed it to try to preserve the corners. We made it a new spine and painted it black. And then we made a cover out of muslin and rubber stamps to cover up our construction on the inside. So that's where we are. And let's just go through these signatures real quick and make sure everything's right side up. And it's the way, you know, in the way, in the place that we want it to be. So I'm loving this. This is a glassine bag that I did some collage on and stitched some stuff. So far, they're all the same height, so we're good. But I know that we do have some that are different heights, and I want to make sure that we have them where we want them. And again, make sure everything's right side up. Some coffee dyed paper, some braille paper. I still love the contrast of this white with the more neutral colors. The neutrals are working for me. A little pocket we made. Maybe there aren't any short pages in this one. Nope, I guess there are not. I misspoke. Everything is right side up. Yay! So this guy is good to go. Here's the second signature. And again, I'm making this as a creative journal the way that I like mine to be. So it will have um, two signatures. There are eight pages in each signature, which actually turns into 32 writing surfaces, which is perfect for a month. Um, and there are two of them again. They can be used for memory keeping, they can be used for writing, whatever you like. They do not have to be a daily journal or 
a journal of any sort if you don't like it. But that is what I was geared towards. Now, we do have a page here. Let me scoot it over. This guy's a little shorter. So let's scoot him up towards the middle a little more. I love when pages are different heights and different widths. I just think that that makes it so much more interesting. And here's one that's a little shorter as well as this one. So I'd like those to be offset a little bit. You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking I want this one to be in the other signature. <gasps> Switching it up. What? Crazy talk. We'll scoot that one up a little bit. That one's down towards the bottom. And now we have to do a switcheroo. Okay. Because there were no smaller pages in this one, it'll be fun to take one out of here and do that. Let's take this Braille page for no reason other than that's where I opened it. We will put this right here. I kind of want it in the middle, but it doesn't have to be exact. And then we'll put the Braille page in here to break up these different size pages. Perfect, that makes me happy. And I love these signatures. So when you're doing uh, your book binding, I keep putting it in the wrong place, sorry guys. When you're doing your book binding, you want to start with your um, back signature first. So I'm going to find the center of our signature. And we just had it. There we go. I have packed it down several times, packing it with my fingers, my hands on either side, squishing down in the center. And I don't want it wide open like this because that will make the pages be a little askew. You want to keep it folded up like this and get that center seam pushed down as far and as tightly as you can. Then I'm going to take the big clips and I'm going to clip pretty close to the middle of the signature, making sure I get all these pages. One on the top and then one down on the bottom, holding that with my fingers, making sure everything's staying aligned. Oh, you can't see down in the center where we're going to bind. Okay, then what we can do, actually I probably should have made our template first. Let's grab our, grab our cover. And I know you guys have seen this a million times, but just in case you needed a million and one, here we go. I'm going to take my template and I'm going to tear this paper to be the height of the cover where I want our signatures to fall. So I'm just using the bottom of the end papers that were already existing in the book. We'll tear that piece off. And we're going to do a nice three hole pamphlet stitch. So what we can do is fold this piece in half and we'll move our cover. Let's get a good fold in the middle. And then to get a three hole pamphlet stitch, you're going to fold the paper in half okay, from top to bottom. You also want to mark the top of your template every time because no matter how close you think you've measured these holes, they're not perfect. Okay, so I have measured the top. I'm going to put a dot there in the middle. And to make them perfectly even, you want your holes perfectly spaced, you would fold there and make a dot on that fold line. We could actually do a five hole. Maybe we should just because I've had questions. Let's do that. So what I'm going to do, we're switching gears. We're doing five instead of three. So I'm going to put a hole there. And I folded up the bottom to meet the center hole. And we'll put a, a hole there on that line. And then I'm going to fold up the bottom to meet that next hole. Hopefully this white is kind of blown out. Hopefully you can see. I'll hold up the um, template in a second so you can see. The holes are not perfectly spaced, and that's okay with me. I like how it looks that way. Um, 
it makes it interesting. And actually, on this particular book, we're not even going to see. Oh, that's so blown out. Let me see if I can move that light a little bit. Let's see if that helps. Oh, that does help. There we go. So this is our center hole. And then we've got two on either side. So that'll give us five holes. Um, and on this particular book, as I was saying, we're going to cover up the stitching. So you won't even be able to see it on the spine. So we'll take our second signature. This is the one that goes in the back. And we'll fold up our template. Make sure we have the T for top. And then we're going to nestle this piece of paper right in the center on these pages. Make sure it's pushed down really well. Hold these closed, not all the way closed, obviously, but push this down. Hold the signature with my fingers. Make sure everything's all compacted in the middle. And we'll grab our pokey tool. And we'll go in the middle hole, give it a good twist, we'll go up to the next hole, and we'll give it a good twist, make sure we're getting through all those pages. We don't have a huge amount of bolt to get through, so it goes through really easily. Okay, we'll go down here, it doesn't matter what order you do them in. And then we'll go down here. So we've got all of our holes poked. You oh, have such an itchy nose. Let's see. My mom always used to say that uh, it meant you were going to kiss a fool. You guys heard that? Old Southern thing, I think. She had all kinds of um, funny little, uh, what are those called? They're not proverbs. Something. They're called something. And looking for the other signature, and I only have big fat clips for this one. Oh, craft a lanch. All right, so here's our other signature. Make sure this is all, I know we took a page out, so make sure I, we put it in the right way. Yep, and it's where we liked it. Just you, really double checking is not a bad thing. It's not the end of the world if you bind your signature in upside down. It happens to the best of us. It's happened to me. Uh, it's just a little frustrating, and it's like measure twice, cut once. Same thing with your signatures. Just go back and double check. It doesn't take very long and saves you a little frustration. However, if you bind it in upside down, not the end of the world. Either use it upside down or take it out and bind it back in. You haven't lost anything but a little time and maybe a little thread. Okay, so we have those guys. And again, making sure we have our template. I've got my T at the top. I don't know why I do it sideways. I always have. But I make sure that my top is on my left. Got those pages all lined in there and got it folded up again. Grab my pad. And we'll just poke our holes again. Going right down through. Getting a good hole in there. Going right down through. Here's our third. Still holding everything in place with my fingers. We don't want the template to slide. I have so many projects I want to do. I want to get these guys finished up so I can move on to the next. I'm excited. Starting to get the house unpacked. Things are settling. Makes me want to craft, craft, craft. All right, so that's our first signature. And we can go in, and you know what? I made an extra air hole right there. Can you see that? It went off a little, little askew. So that is what Shannon Green always refers to as extra breathing space, an extra air hole, which makes me laugh. And it's not the end of the world. What we'll do is go back in. Make sure we've got that down lined up tight. Reclip it. I think that the um, these bigger binder clips are a little harder to work with. I should have not been lazy and gone and found more. Line that back up. And then we can just put a little washi tape over that front page and uh, cover up that hole. Or we can leave it because the journal might need to want breathe more. Perfect. Now we got them exactly where we want them. We just have this extra set. Of holes right here and we can address that okay so that's our first signature 
There's our signet second signature. Now we'll grab our cover. Okay, and this is the top of our cover. You can see it says roll book here. It's really beat up and faded, but it's there. Then decide where we want this. Okay, so do you remember how wide our spine is? Because I don't. Grab our ruler. Seems like forever ago that we made this. Two and a half. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. We do. Hmm. I'm looking at the zero in the center of my ruler. And again, does not have to be perfect. Um, trying to center that pretty close. And I'm thinking, because we want to have lots of room uh, for this to get fatter and chunkier and more delicious, I'm thinking I'm going to go... Hmm. About through, no, about a half an inch from the center of the spine. That's where we're going to put it. Yep, that works for me. And if you'd like to draw a little line to go by, absolutely do that. It will not show once you get your your um, signature in there. So that's just fine. Oh my gosh, itchy nose and my stomach's growling like crazy. Can you guys hear that? It's ridiculous. Okay, so we have those lines, so then we can, oh, you know what I almost did there? <laughs> I almost didn't check to make sure we have the top. This is the top of our template. This is the top of our journal. Get that lined up. Get it nice and straight, and we will poke our holes. Once again, I've got that pad under there, and I'm really, I'm kind of working the needle tool pretty well um, because we've got a lot of, of layers that we made. We have the Tyvek that we put in and the cardboard. I think we had two or three layers of chipboard and fabric and paint. So once you get that needle tool down in there, you give it a good, give it a good twist to make sure you've gone all the way through. And then we'll move the template over to the other line and do exactly the same thing. That way your holes are nice and even. And we'll get those signatures in there. Neat and tidy. I'm going to start my thread on the outside. I don't necessarily love having um, thread on the inside of my journal. Sometimes I feel like putting some charms or something on the inside, but on this one, I don't think I care to. So I will grab my needle and get some thread. And normally you can go about two and a half lengths of your spine for your thread length. I do not like to run out of thread, so I overcompensate. We're also doing a five hole instead of a three hole, so we're gonna need a little more thread. So I'm going about four inches over the top of my signature and then three lengths, or the top of my cover rather. And then I'm gonna do three lengths and a little bit. I hope that made sense. It is, I am kind of wasteful with my binding thread. I will admit it freely. Just don't care to run out of thread. Again, not the end of the world. You unthread it and start over. Um, and there you have it. But I don't want to. I'd rather just go ahead and have too much on the first run. <laughs> I will also say that if you have to unbind it because you don't have enough thread, I do not recommend reusing the same piece of thread to bind it. You lose some of the strength uh, when you're going in and out of the holes. The friction will uh, wear down your thread a little bit. Oh man, I can't get this threaded. Get right on camera, I can't do anything. Sheesh. Nope. Okay, let's try the other end. Ooh, the other end's really frayed. We'll give it a little nip and see. See if that'll work. I have this thread wrapped on a piece of cardstock because it's the one that rides around in my travel bag. Ooh, hardest thing ever. Well, 
This video is 45 minutes long because I can't thread my needle. Super fun. Super thumbs up. I'm wondering. Oh, no, there we go. Ooh, I thought there was something blocking the eye of my needle. All right, so now we're good. Let's grab that back signature. Once again, making sure we've got it right side up. And I am going to start from the outside of my cover. I'm going to go in that middle hole. Make sure I've got enough thread on the outside to tie a knot. I'm going to go in the middle hole. Oh, look at that. It went right through. I love when that happens. Then I'm going to go down to the, or up rather, to the second hole. Down through the cover, so you can see it coming through right there. Just make sure you're staying in the same line of holes. You don't want to bind half of it in the front row and half in the back row, because that's going to be a big mess. Right through that top hole in your cover. Get through that top hole in your signature. Drop the needle. That's always, you know, part of the whole gig. Can't do the whole thing without dropping your needle. Try that again. There we go. Hmm. Well, it doesn't want to go straight through, so what you're going to do is feed it through a few pages at a time. So you find your your path again. There we go. Just took a few, and it happens. You pull that snug. Don't want to tear anything. Also, want to make sure you're not losing your tail on the outside, right? Go back in. We're gonna go in the second hole. We've already gone in it once. We're going in it again. And you'll see that when we made the holes, I made sure I didn't go super high on the signature to make that last hole. You really don't want to be closer than about three quarters of an inch to the top of your signature or the bottom of your signature because that is just looking for trouble to tear through. So that is why we did the spacing there that we that we did. Going through that hole, up through there. We're working on the bottom now. So that's the one, two, three. That's the fourth hole. Pull this, make sure we haven't lost our, our tail. We're good. Then we're gonna go down to this fifth hole. I keep moving, the, I do. I flip the book around like crazy when I'm binding. Always do. Then find our hole in the cover. Pull that through. Yep, flipping it around like it's a pancake on a griddle. Okay. Then we're going to go back up. Can you guys see this? We're going to go back up through our fourth hole. And a five hole um, pamphlet stitch is not necessary. I like it on a bigger journal sometimes just for a little extra security on the on the pages. Certainly a three hole would work just fine too. I'm gonna pull that. You don't want to pull it so tight that you're tearing anything. And then we're gonna go down through the middle hole again. And the trick with this one is now you're going through a couple layers. Let's see if we can. Wow. With neutrals, it's uh, harder to find the, the hole. There we go. So we're coming up on the back of the, on the spine, back through that center hole, and we just don't want to split any of our thread. So we come back out, pull it tight, make sure everything's looking pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is, ha do you see how they're both on one side of this long thread? We don't want that. We want one on either side. So I'll just take my needle. <laughs> oh boy, the thread has gone rogue. There we go. We'll take the needle, and now we have one on either side, and that'll give us a nice, clean, tight knot. 
I always put my needle right back in my felt because I will lose it within 15 seconds, guaranteed. And we'll go inside, we'll take a peek at our pages. I'm gonna take the clumpy clips off, make sure everything's lying in there and is nice and firm. Oh, look at that, you guys. Oh, I love this journal so much. Take it and give it a little waggle. It's got a little, a little more give than I'd like. Not a ton, but we'll, we'll tighten this up a little bit. And what you want to do is pull on the thread, not just straight. Don't just like yank it like this. What you want to do is pull the thread in the direction it's going in your book. Okay, so give it a little pull this way, a little pull that way. Let's check this out again. Oh, love our fabric flip. Love that guy. Everything's looking great, and we have no more waggle. So that is looking good. Pull it one more time, make sure it's tight, and then I'm just going to tie a little overhand knot. And I'll probably tie it like three times just for fun. Oh, and then the thread broke. Epic fail. We didn't get enough of a knot, so yep, I am going to have to go back, unthread it, and restitch it. So I'm going to stop the video because, yeah, you don't want to watch that. But it does happen. Um, I don't know why it happened, but I can see the threads looking a little frayed. So I'm actually glad that it happened because if it broke when I was tying the knot, it might have just been frayed there and it wouldn't have been as strong as I would like. So I am going to go ahead and stop the video, pause the video, and I'll come back after I get this re -sewn. It is not a problem. Okay, so we're back. I didn't do anything exciting. All I did was reclip the pages. I reclipped the pages in my signature before I pulled the thread out. That way everything stayed aligned. And I pulled the thread out and then just did all the steps that we already did and left it right here at the knot tying stage. Let's see if we can do that without breaking the thread. I did throw that piece away. I got a whole new piece of thread. And I'm just going to do this little easy overhand knot. And I'm going to do three of them just because. Seems like a good number. And then I'm going to take my scissors, which apparently need some sharpening, and cut off the excess. Then we can take our book, take the clips off again, and let's see how nice and beautiful it is. Look at that, just as sturdy as it can be. There's almost no wiggle. A Little bit of give is good, but that is bound in just beautifully. Everything is right side up. Everything is centered. All the pages landed right where we wanted them. So this signature is good to go and it's gorgeous. Just going through and giving the pages an extra little little burnish on the on the seam. Here's our fabric flip. Oh, we caught a little piece of thread and that's okay. That's right in the binding. We can just give that a little haircut, set it free, and it's good to go. Give that a little fold. Some of the uh, scrapbook paper is a little stiffer. So just give that an extra, an extra burnish. And as it's used, that'll get more and more trained to stay down and nice and flat. So look at that, she's a beauty. Now this um, second signature, which is actually the first signature in the book, is gonna go in now and the book is gonna look kinda empty. But there is a reason for that, and the reason would be that um, I stuff my books. My books always start out kind of empty looking at the beginning, and by the end of two months of creative daily journaling, they are exploding. So that is the way that I'm making these guys. So they are ready to get stuffed. I cut a piece of thread when I had it out, and now I've gotten a knot in it. Also, this is real time, guys. I don't feel like messing with the knot, so I'm cutting it off. You get to see all my all my screw ups. How exciting for you! You must be thrilled. All right, let's see how many shots it takes to get this one threaded, huh? And we're gonna do the same thing. 
putting in the first signature. We've got our holes all punched in there. Can you believe it? Oh man, I had it and then I pulled it out. The hardest two parts of journal making, threading a needle and getting a needle back into your art glitter glue spout. Seriously, those are the two hardest parts. Not kidding. If you're just starting out and you're worried about binding in or anything else, don't be. It is so easy. If I can do it. Yes, indeed. If I can do it, you can do it. So here's our first signature. Taking a peek. We got it right side up. Yes, we do. So once again, I'm going to go from the outside middle hole. You guys can see that. Go right through the spine where we made our pokey tool hole. Get this thread with our nice generous tail. And get this signature. Go right through our center hole. There it is. Pull our thread through. Go to the second hole. Go through our cover. And pull it to the back. We have that big, gorgeous piece of black lace that you guys helped me pick out to cover up the spine. I don't usually do black on black, but man, that's going to look amazing. And go up to the third hole, which is the top hole. Open up our signature again. Yeah, I definitely think binder clips are easier than these big fat clips. Preference. Purely preference. Get that right through there. It's flapping all around. That is to be expected. Again, with these really heavy clips, that's making it a little more flappy than usual. Get that pulled nice and snug. Go down to that. Oh, Paul, going off camera. Go on camera. Go to the second hole again. And right through the cover, making sure you're not splitting the thread. That's the only, only thing to watch out for. Pull that through. Get it nice and taut. Still got our tail. Make sure you're not pulling your tail out. Pull it taut. After this many stitches, after you've done like three stitches, you're getting to where you want to get the signature snugged into place so it's not flapping around so much anymore. And then we'll go into our second set of holes that we made, not our original air holes, but that one that we lined up better. Oh, we got it in one. Look at us go. And when the thread's this long, sometimes it Kind of gets tangled around itself, but just keep an eye and it'll be just fine. And then there's that last hole. Put it through the last hole in the spine. Had it and then lost it. That's silly. There we go. Get it right through there. And at this point, I'm going to take these heavy clips off because they're annoying me. I'll just set those aside. And we've got everything lined up now, so we don't need them to be keeping the signature in, in check. So I'm just pulling on that. I'm going to pull on our center thread. Again, just firming it up. You don't want to yank on it so hard you're tearing any paper or breaking your thread. And we'll go into this back up to the fourth hole. Find the center of our signature to get that through. Oh, you guys, every time I go through this and see the pages again, I'm like, oh, I can't sell this. I'm keeping it. Imagine how many journals I'd have. Where's the center of our signature? It's hiding. Here we go. Here we go. Pull that thread back up. Get it nice 
nice and snug. Then go back down through the center hole. She says. Just take a little peek and see where that center hole is. So I'm going back to the front of the signature just to guide the needle through. And sometimes it goes right through easy peasy and sometimes it needs just a little bit of one page at a time guidance, which is fine. Something might have just shifted a little bit. There we go, I could feel it slide right through. We're back on track now. And then back into the front, front cover. A little finagling. It's a lot of pages and it's in there nice and tightly now, so sometimes it does take a little wiggling around. Oh no, and then I pulled the needle out. <laughs> Darn it. Just gonna straighten out the thread, make sure we're not gonna get a knot, and scratch my nose. Good grief. Yeah, okay, let's try that again. I went through all the pages that time. We just have to get it through the through the hole in the spine, which I just can't find. No way I'm going to be able to do it on camera. It's not funny. It really is the way. There we go. Just needed a tiny wiggle. So we're all the way through to the front. We're pulling that tight again, just snugging it up. You don't want to pull it so tight you're tearing. I know I keep saying that over and over, but it's just something to keep in mind. I'm going to make sure that I'm sliding the needle up under that long thread so that there's an end of thread on either side of that. Oh, nope, missed it. Try it again. And it looks like the center thread is just a little wiggly. So I'm going to go back and pull this, see what's going on. There we go. Got that tightened right up. Let's go inside and check the signature, make sure it's nice and tight and firmly in place. Yes, it is. It's looking awesome. So we can go out here and we can tie it off. Take our needle off and put it back in the Felt. Oh, this time I lost my whole piece of felt. Wow, that is mad skills. Oh, here it is. Only a little lost. It's back. Okay. And we'll just give this another couple overhand knots. And we will have bound in our gorgeous signatures. There's two, and a third one for good measure. A third one to grow on. I guess I did really kind of go nuts on how much thread I used. This piece I will probably keep and use in a tassel. This is great thread for a tassel because it's easy to slide beads onto. Again, I will not use it for binding because we've run it through these holes so many times that it may not have the integrity that it did originally for binding. So we trim those pieces off. Actually, I think I'll trim them a little bit more. Don't cut your don't cut your thread when you're doing that because then you'll be back to binding number two again. We use our little stabby scissors. So we have them all bound in. Look at that. Neat and tidy, all nice and straight. And look at our beautiful pages. Oh, don't you love the edges we put on? So pleased with those. And there we have it. If you're following along, you have bound together a journal. You can absolutely leave it right here. You are good. You have made a book. Loving it. Loving it. Again, burnishing down those pages a little bit as we're checking it out. Getting them all nice and ready to be trained into place. 
Everything's right side up. Everything that needed to get caught has gotten caught. It is in fine shape. And I never ever am fail, I fail to be amazed at this. Oh my gosh, we took all these random pieces of paper and we turned them into a book. Look at us go. Love this guy. So at this point, I think I will grab that piece of lace that we set aside and glue it over the fine. I don't have it sitting right there, because why would I? That would be too easy, wouldn't it? <coughs> Excuse me. This is that gorgeous lace, and it actually is going to let the binding show through a little bit. And I'm not sure if I like that. What do you guys think? Love the lace on here. Nope. So I'm going to find another piece of fabric to put underneath to cover those stitches. And then we'll put the lace on. So we will do that in a different video. I think I've tortured you long enough. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much for coming along. And I honestly hope that you will give it a try. Binding a journal is super easy. And even if you break the thread, that's the worst thing that happens. You just go back and do it again. No biggie. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. And I'll be back real soon to uh, finish the spine on this. And we'll do some decorating. Thanks, guys. Love you. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up like down below, subscribe to my channel, and share it with a friend who might want to learn how to bind a journal. Bye.